So today we're going to be comparing the Electric Eel Wheel 6 versus the Electric Eel Wheel Nano. And how better to do that than with a good old fashioned tug of war. So the Nano is getting off to an early start and oh, it, it doesn't seem to be doing too much. Now let's start up the 6. Oh, this is not looking good for the Nano. So that did show that the uptake on the Electric Eel Wheel 6 is more powerful than the uptake on the Electric Eel Wheel Nano. But now I want to go on a more serious note and really talk about the real differences in the Electric Eel Wheel 6 versus the Electric Eel Wheel Nano. Now with the 6, what I've tried to do is create a production spinner. So that's a spinner that can hold a lot of yarn on its bobbins. Uh, it's going to spin for a long time. It can spin yarn fairly quickly, so I really sort of targeted at that. But with that comes a lot larger controls, and it actually makes it easier to use. With the Nano, I was really focusing on uh, an e-spinner at an unheard of price tag of around $100. So with that, I had to make some compromises in the design, but it really enables this spinner to get to a lot more people. It's also smaller than other e-spinners, which makes it ultra portable. So I think that both of these spinning wheels work well, and uh, they're just sort of targeting different markets. And what I want to talk about today is sort of the differences so that people can sort of decide which one is better for them. Now, first off, I want to talk about the price. So I don't have a final retail price for this Electric Eel Wheel 6 yet, but it's probably going to be around $260, which is still a great deal uh, compared to a lot of other e-spinners out there. But the Nano is currently selling in my store for $110. So clearly a lower price is better, and the winner of this round is the Nano. Next up, is the sliding hook design. So with the 6, I've used this new sliding hook design that's actually really easy to do. And when the yarn's pulling against this hook, it actually locks it into place. So it doesn't move when it's spinning, but it's very easy to move with your hands. This is a better hook design than what I've done on the Nano here. With this one, you can slide it yourself. It's actually a pretty good design. And, or you can pinch it and makes it easier to slide. Uh, so I like this design as well, especially on the 1.1 where I've improved the hook design a little bit by making them thinner. It's pretty good, but it's just not quite as good as the 6. So on this one, I'm going to give the uh, 6 an advantage. Now the tension system on the 6 has this dial here, and it's really smooth. Even compared to the electric eel wheel 5 where I also had a dial, this one actually has a spring embedded into it that gives it a very consistent feel, which just feels good in your hands here. Um, so I really love this tension system. Also, I found with the larger bobbins that a uh, spring system, you can see the spring right here, with a uh, cotton uh, cord works really well. On the Nano, I used uh, a slot system like this and you just sort of pull it through and while this works it doesn't work as well so this round goes to the electric eel wheel six next up bobbin size so you can see here that the bobbins on the electric eel wheel six here are much larger than the bobbins on the electric eel wheel nano specifically we found that these bobbins typically hold about two ounces whereas the six bobbins are my biggest bobbins ever and they hold about eight ounces. So bigger is better in terms of bobbins. Everybody wants a bigger bobbin. So the six is going to win in this case. Now I just want to talk a little bit about size and weight. So you can see that the Nano is quite a bit smaller and the Electric Eel Wheel 6 is bigger. Just for visual reference, here we go. It's quite a bit bigger, but it's still, I mean, I'm always just holding it with one hand. So it's still very portable and it's just up to people uh, whether they want this really small design or a larger design. So I don't really think there's a winner here in the size or in the weight. Again, some people like a little bit heavier wheel so it holds uh, itself on a table and that's the six. Or people want a really light wheel because they're taking it, you know, knitting with them. And a lot of people can like fit this in, you know, just a very small bag and take it out to knitting night 
and spin with it. So again, I don't really see a winner, but that, that's a big difference is, um, this one weighs over two pounds and this one weighs well under one pound. Now we'll get back to, um, a decision that I think there's a clear winner and that's the motor. Uh, so this one spins the flyer at about 1800 RPMs, whereas the nanos spins it at a slower 1000 RPMs at the flyer. So a thousand RPMs is enough for a lot of spinners, but many spinners will want to go a little bit faster than that. And like most decisions I made with the nano, I just kept this one slower because, uh, I needed to keep the price down. Whereas with the six, I went with a much bigger, more powerful motor and that could spin it at a speed that not many people, uh, will spin it. There, there'll certainly be a few that want to spin it, you know, the full speed. But what I found in my testing is that the majority of spinners don't typically spin at 1800 RPMs. That's a pretty high speed. Another thing with this motor is it's um, a different kind of technology. It's called brushless. And just by virtue of how it's designed, it lasts longer. So the motor in the electric EO wheel six lasts for about 30,000 hours, whereas the motor in the electric EO wheel nano uses an older technology called a brush motor and it's rated for about 800 of hours of use. So this, this one's much, much longer lived motor. So again, this, a longer living motor is better, but the reason it's longer living is because I could spend more money, uh, when making this more expensive version than I could on, you know, a hundred dollar e-spinner. The spindle, which is sort of the center core portion of this one is stainless steel. And it's been machined to a very high precision, and that completely eliminates all of the bobbin, uh, rattle and vibration. It also, because it's, uh, stainless steel, has a much longer life. When the yarn is sort of rubbing up against the, uh, edges here, uh, this can wear out on a softer materials, but it will last for a very long time using the grade of stainless steel that I used. With the Nano, uh, to save cost, I made the spindle out of uh, glass reinforced nylon and uh, it will last a long time. It was the most durable plastic I could come up with, but eventually it starts to show some wear. So there is a uh, limited lifespan on the spindle for the Nano, but um, it's pretty good. Also, because it's all injection molded, you can kind of hear there's a little bit of rattle. Uh, on the bobbin. You just can't machine things or, or you can't get the fit as good with injection molded parts as you can with a uh, steel machined spindle like the electric eel wheel six has. So that round goes to the electric eel wheel six. Another thing, and I'll have some videos showing this, but the electric eel wheel six is much better at spinning bulky yarn. The nano can kind of handle it, but the electric eel wheel six really excels at it. So if you're looking to spin bulkier yarn, then the electric eel wheel six is uh, going to be the winner. And for fine yarn, they both spin quite well. Uh, the real advantage to the six with fine yarn is what I already mentioned before. It, it spins faster. And with spi fine yarn, you want to add a lot of twist quickly. So you'll be able to spin your fine yarn a little bit faster on the six than you could with the nano but both work really well for fine yarns. It's just where bulky yarns come into play. The six sort of has this extra advantage. And the last thing I'll talk about is this foot pedal. Now this comes with the electric eel wheel six, and that's so you can start and stop it with your foot, or you could just put it on your table and, and use your hand to activate it if you wanted to. So this is a nice feature, but uh, because of reducing costs, I don't make a foot pedal for the electric eel wheel nano, whereas there's one that comes with the electric eel wheel six. So that's another advantage to the six. So I hope that helps you sort of see the differences in the electric eel wheel six versus the electric eel wheel nano. The main advantage of the nano is that it's a lot lower cost. And then the electric eel wheel six is better at just about everything but it comes at a higher cost. So it's really up to the users. The only advantage to the Nano besides price is that it's very 
very small and portable. So if you're looking for a purely travel-friendly spinning wheel, the Nano might win out in that regards. But otherwise, the electric eel wheel 6 is a better uh, e-spinner in most respects. Hopefully this helped. Thanks for watching.